Hi, welcome back to the workbench. Just got in a clicky keyboard. One with mechanical switches on it. Because I missed my old M-series keyboard that I had for using with servers. It was a server rack mount unit about, well, about this big. And I liked having a clicky keyboard around, so I figured I'd pick one up. And then it occurred to me that not only could I use a clicky keyboard, I could also use something like the new Raspberry Pi with K400, the embedded all-in-one machine. So, uh, after I purchased this in, I was curious exactly how much space was available on the bottom of this and how it was put together. What I'm thinking is that I can either replace the bottom case on this with a uh, casing that'll let me embed a computer in it, or possibly just embed a computer in this one, although that looks like there's about a quarter inch of space in the bottom, so probably not going to happen on there. But I figured we could at least take a look at what all is involved in here and what it includes. So that's pretty much it. It's just a, let's see, mechanically switched keys and a keyboard. Those look like they're removable, but I guess not with that tool, which is interesting. I was kind of hoping that the uh, tool included with it would, now oh, this has got to be a mouse of some sort. And that's it. Yeah, so it looks like those are removable, though. Let's see what we've got here. This was the cheapest one I could find with the additional uh, numeric keypad on the side, but the small form factor. So it gets rid of the dedicated print screen, scroll lock, pause keys up here, and the extra key set, and just replaces it with a numeric keypad, which I like because how often do you use scroll lock and pause anymore? I think it's been a good few years since I've had to actually use any of those keys. Hmm. And these, I'm going to have to look at how those are removable. Let's see, there's a screw on there, screw on there. Let's get these keys off. There's a library I'll link to down below that you can print out new keys with, which is kind of neat. Looks like there's just, oh wait, there's, ah, actually there's a whole bunch of screws holding this together. There we go, all the keys removed. I saved you the trouble of listening to me clack those things off with the key remover. Actually, it works pretty well. Let's see what we've got under here. And there we go. I've never actually looked at the underside of one of these before. Ah, hey, cool. So, this one actually has some LEDs built into the back side. Looks like they put them on the underside of the system, which is a little weird. Maybe they have some openings in there to let them show through? I don't think so, though. That much is, must just be a reflection, I guess? Or something. That's a little strange. Yeah, we might, have to un we might have to plug this in and see exactly how that works. There's your logic board for the, for the chips. Let's see what we've got here. All right, that's a VS11K15A from Vision. And a date stamp on there. So, that's all that is. I can see if I can pull up a schematic for that. If I find one, I'll link it below and, and put, it, uh, put it up for you to see. Aside from that, this is all pretty standard. There's LEDs, resistors for the LEDs, and uh, logic for the driver chip, capacitor. We've got USB cable running out, four wire, five wire, five wire, four wire ground. And then there's just a bunch of unpopulated circuits on the board for what looks like, from the labeling, other LEDs, because they're labeled SLED and RA some number. So. It looks like these are all unpopulated resistors and LED combinations. I'm not sure why. I don't know exactly what purpose those would have, but it's possible that it's just for a different design that they use the same board for. Also, looking at the underside, these are all permanently mounted. They're just soldered down connections for each one of these switches. So you can't remove the switches on here unless you unsolder them, which would be uh, tedious. So I, yeah, there's no real reason to do that. I, I, I guess if you had one of these and you were, you know, just needed to replace a switch, that would be doable. Not not that big a deal to solder one of them and replace it. But if, say, you wanted to replace all the switches, you'd be far better served picking up a mechanical keyboard with, with the actual removable switches. All right, fun fact. These don't actually work unless you're plugging them to a PC. It's 
initializing when it brings up the USB keyboard rather than just when it receives power. So that's a thing. But let's see how those LEDs work. I've got a computer right here and I'll plug it in. Yep, there's an initialization sequence and they're all on. There we go. You can probably see that. So uh, purple, blue, green, yellow, and red. Just sections of the board. They're all single color LEDs. And you can see them. Let me get rid of some light in here and you'll be able to see a little more clearly how those LEDs illuminate. And there we are. So there's the LEDs lit up pretty clearly. And there's the keyboard lit. They don't actually have multicolor LEDs on there. Like I was saying, they're not programmable. They're just single color LEDs. Look like they're the 1204, I think it is, size, 1206. That size of SMD component. And there looks like they've just got a cutout on the back and they're soldered over it. So there's just an opening on the circuit board letting the LEDs shine through. And they work pretty well. It's a neat effect, and I think you can, let's see if it'll let me switch the color scheme. Yeah, no, well, I, I guess it's maybe got to be set before you can do any of that. It was supposed to be function and then the numeric keys, which should be right here, but I'm not seeing that change. So obviously there's some other thing involved or you have to have it... Uh, actually operating or there's some special windows driver for it oh ha. and they integrated the caps lock and i'm guessing num lock but i don't know which key num lock is if it's if it's available on the board but looks like they integrated the locking function with the backlight of the key which is kind of neat And the wind key isn't lit. Does it have an LED? The wind key has an LED, it's just not lit up. So I'm not sure what the reasoning is there, but that's the case. That looks like the only one that's not actually lit aside from the caps lock, which lights up when it's in use. There we go. And that's it. That's how that works. Let me get the keyboard back together and we'll just take a quick listen to how it is. The keys are actually, those switches are good. They're a, they're a pretty pretty good uh, cross between feel, responsiveness, and uh, noise. They're not the noisiest keys. My M series was definitely definitely a lot clackier than that on the Depress, and it was it had a lot more spring behind it. But to be honest, these are probably more more to my liking as far as using a keyboard goes. I don't quite need either that much noise or resistance on my keyboard. Let me get the keys back on and we'll take a listen. And we're back together again. And there we go. There's the keyboard. I'm pretty happy with its use. Here's a quick sample of what the keys sound like, at least from the distance of the microphone. It's just about right for my application, I think. And what I'm going to ultimately do with this one is to build in this to the bottom of it. At least that's why I got the keyboard with that in the back of my mind. This is a tiny Atom-based system. It's rather generic, but it's also got the nice feature of being incredibly thin. It's not quite as small as some of the kind of gumstick form factor systems. They make a few of them that are kind of pi zero sized over the years. It would also work in this if I was even further stretched for space, but I think this will work because it's about the same depth as the board. So with it being this thick, I will have to build a new back plate for this which will be interesting in its own right. And then this will come out of the case. This is probably about as thick as those USB plus the circuit board on the bottom. So I think it'll work. As always, thanks for watching.
Please, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and uh, give us a thumbs up down below. And I will see you next time.